Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann and today I'm doing the Stand With Trans Kids tag, hashtag Stand With, with Trans Kids, um, created by the lovely Leo Bancroft. I will link to his channel down below and his announcement of the tag video. Um, it was his first ever original tag and he made a great one. Um, so I was really excited that he tagged me um, and really excited to do this tag um, because I do stand with trans kids and this issue has been one that is close to my heart and has been since I first heard about um, transness and what it is when I was in early high school. I will have the tag questions down below with timestamps and let's dive into it. So question number one, tag some fabulous friends who also may want to do this tag and stand with trans kids. So. The folks that I'm tagging are people um, who often read books that are either by or about trans, non-binary, um, or more generally LGBTQ um, plus people. So um, I expect to get more book recommendations from them by tagging them, I hope. Um, but then also anyone who does this video, if you like it and you want to do it, please consider yourself tagged. So the folks that I'm tagging in particular um, are Courtney Ferreter. Um, her channel is under the same name. Um, Josh from Josh's Bookish Voyage, Amy at A Star Reads, Melissa at Fully Booked, Tyler at The Chaos of Tyler, and Katie at Katie Reads and Rants, and Kathy Tryhart at the channel of the same name. So I will have links to all of their channels down below. They are all fantastic booktubers who I've been following um, for quite a while now, I think, in all these cases. So please go check out their channels. Okay. Question number two, tell us about some books on your TBR pile featuring a trans non-binary, trans or non-binary character or nonfiction about trans or non-binary stuff. So there's a lot. Um, so I'm gonna just share some that were recommended by fellow booktubers so that I can link to channels where they talk about these books um, from folks who've actually read them, but these are ones that I'm excited to read. So first, two authors. Um, so Okweke Amezi and um, River Solomon are authors that I want to read more books by. So I've read The Death of Vivek Oji by Okweke Amezi and I've read The Deep by River Solomon. And I thought they were fantastic, beautifully well-written books. And so they both have a lot of other books that are about trans or non-binary um, characters. So I'm really excited to keep reading those two authors. But then some other things on my TBR are Persephone Station, which is a lot of queerness in space and has um, at least one non-binary character. And I heard about that from Laura at The Reading Mushroom, so I will link to her channel. Um, then a book of poetry called Daybreak, or it's, it's day slash break. I don't know if I'm supposed to say the slash or not by Gwen Benaway. Um, and that's uh, poems feature, um, exploring the experience of being trans feminine. So I think that sounds really good. And I heard about that from Melissa at Fully Booked. Um, then Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe, which is a memoir. And I heard about that on Courtney Ferreter's channel. And that sounds um, really good. Then Daryl by Jackie S, um, which comes highly recommended by Kevy at Say Kevy and Scott and Nell at Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And then in the nonfiction category, Venus Castina, which Kevy talked about um, several months ago in a video and is nonfiction. So Kevy um, knows a lot about the history of drag um, and the history of transness in our society um, as well. And so she recommends um, or reads a lot and occasionally recommends books that are on the nonfiction side, um, which I think is really cool. Um, okay, then question number three, recommend a favorite book, show, or movie featuring a trans or non-binary character. Um, I'm looking forward to watching more videos of this tag because I would love to hear about more shows and movies that feature trans and non-binary characters. Because um, I tend to not gravitate towards that kind of media as much. Um, but if there's something that I can get excited about watching, then I'll be excited about watching it. So I stuck with books. Um, so one book that I definitely want to highlight because I don't hear it getting talked about on BookTube very much is Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston, which is epic fantasy. And I adored it. I read it in December, like December of 2020, I think, and reviewed it on my channel. So I'll link to that down below. Um, but one of the, not one of the POV characters, but a very foundational character in the story um, is non-binary and it's a whole part of the culture and it's very beautifully done. Um, so I, I, I just love that book. Please go read that book. And Andrea Hairston just came out with a new book recently and I'm forgetting the title, um, but I really want to read it because I just loved her writing and her imagination. Just absolutely wonderful. So Master of Poisons. 
Um, but then some other standouts are The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Yamezi, um, just gorgeously written and about um, a trans woman and the uh, sort of her, some of her journey and the challenges um, that she faced. And it was just absolutely lovely. So those are a couple standouts. Um, prompt number four, everyone has their own journey and no one demographic is a monolith. Recommend a book with a journey, however you define that. And I'm going to do a total cop out on this and say Lord of the Rings, because when Leo was doing his video, that was the first thing I immediately thought of when he read this question. I was like, it's gotta be Lord of the Rings. And I even commented on that. And I think he did include it uh, later, but it wasn't the first thing he mentioned. So anyway, Lord of the Rings, the best journey of all time. Um, okay, question number five. None of us knows everything, even about our own identities, especially since we're not a monolith and each have our own journey. What is a book that taught you something either about yourself or the world around you? And I'm also going to do a cop out for this one and say all of them because almost every book certainly teaches me about the world around me because I'm always reading from someone else's perspective, even if it's like a topic area that I'm already familiar with or have lived experience in. Um, hearing about someone else's perspective always teaches me something. And many books, um, fiction, memoir, everything, uh, really help me understand myself a little bit better as I'm imagining myself in the shoes of the characters or hearing a dilemma or something like framed in a different way than I've thought about it, but that teaches me about my perspective. So yeah, that's totally a cop out, all of them. <laughs> um, okay, question number six. When things are hard in the world or in our lives, sometimes there are things we can do to help center and refocus ourselves, to bring joy, to keep us going, to keep living, resisting, being our authentically amazing selves. What are things you do to center yourself or find joy? Um, I think these are things that I've talked about in other prompts, um, but some pretty basic things. So reading is one. Um, Getting outside, especially going for walks. Um, I really love just super long walks or hikes with um, one or two people where we can have a really interesting, really deep conversation. Um, that, that really centers me and makes me feel connected to other people, um, which is really lovely. Um, having nice times with loved ones. Um, in, in my family, that often takes the form of playing games, um, word games and board games and uh, that's just a really lovely time that, again, makes me feel close um, to the people that I'm close to. So things like that. Um, question seven, what's your walk-on music or your feel-at-home-in-your-body music? And again, I have to do a bit of a cop-out because I like a lot of music um, and especially like walk-on, you know, that makes me feel about like dancing, like I'm arriving at the party and stuff. There's a lot of music that will get me up and moving. So again, with a bit of a um, cop-out there. Um, if I want to just like center myself or like have a bit of um, uh, oral um, focus to like help me with a task or something, I often turn to the LOTR soundtrack, the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge nerd. Um, but that's not as much, I guess, related to body. But anyway, okay. Um, question eight, finding mentors, people of wisdom or heroes can be another way to help us navigate life. Who are some of your mentors? Can you share something they taught you or inspired you to learn more about? Um, yeah, so, so many pen mentors <laughs> who inspire me, um, and teach me and, um, a lot of not public people. So I'm not really sure about calling specific people out on social media. It feels a little bit weird, but one thing that all of my mentors have in common, so I'm going to go with a trait here, um, is that they are, um, curious, thoughtful people. And, what I mean by that is that when faced with a challenge, even in like a confrontational situation or when something is really emotionally charged, they are people whose first response is curiosity and thoughtfulness, who will sort of take a step back and engage, well, take a step back and engage are maybe oxymorons, opposites. But no, it makes sense in my head. But they, yeah, they're, they're able to divorce themselves from a situation in, in the immediate, in the immediacy of the situation. And yeah, engage with, with, a, with a situation or with a person like critically, thoughtfully, and with curiosity. Um, and just find a way forward, like no problem. And, and there are people who do that in all aspects of their lives. And I find it so inspiring. And I want to be like those people. And I'm so thankful um, for their presence in my life.
Okay, and then question number nine. Who are some out, trans, or non-binary booktubers, Instagrammers, authors, actors, etc., who you'd like to shout out? Um, so yeah, so there's a few that I'd like to mention. So of course, Leo Bancroft, who created this tag, um, is out as trans and he's absolutely wonderful and has an amazing channel. Um, so please go check out his channel. Um, then also Kevy at Say Kevy, um, another absolutely fantastic channel in completely different ways. And she has amazing book taste. Um, and I just love watching both of their videos. Um, and someone else on YouTube who I really admire, um, and I enjoy, uh, their videos is Joseph O'Malley, who is a fiction writer, but on YouTube he appears in drag, um, and in gorgeous drag, and will read Shakespeare sonnets and then analyze them. And I learn so much and also get Shakespeare appreciation, and it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, and the name of that channel is Too Tight La Trek, so I'll have links to all of these down below. Um, then there's Adri, um, whose pronouns are they, them, and they're at the, um, YouTube channel named Perpetual Pages, and just absolutely lovely human being, and again with the reading taste, so they have absolutely amazing reading taste, and I feel like I want to read every book they talk about. <laughs> um, so again, especially, uh, they do read a fair amount of romance and more, like, young adult stuff, um, as well as, uh, some of the other genres that I'm into, but they're a little more narrowly defined maybe in those genres. So just something to keep in mind. And then elsewhere on the internet, so I follow a lot of trans folks on Twitter because that is a really great place for activism and learning about what's really important in the moment. Um, and so some of the folks I follow on Twitter are Alex Petrovnia, Twitter handle of the same name, Chloe Tinney at It's Chloe Now, I have links to these down below, Aaron Reed at Aaron in the Morn, um, and Chase Strangio at Chase Strangio, um, Twitter handle of the same name. But so all of those folks are um, just incredi incredibly active and vocal about trans rights. Um, in particular, lately, they've been really, really vocal about all the anti-trans legislation that's trying to be passed in the U.S. and is really awful. Um, so those are all great Twitter threads to follow if that's a good way for you to get news and sort of calls to action um, about ways where we can have an impact in fighting for trans rights. Um, so then related to that, number 10, the final question is, what are some organizations you'd like to shout out for supporting trans kids and trans folks? Um, so I, I mentioned all four of those activists on Twitter who I think all have phenomenal um, Twitter feeds and just seem like lovely people as well. But then there's also um, one called Transformations Project and the website is transformationsproject.org. Um, and that is a website that's volunteer run and all it does is track legislation in the United States and all of the like now at this point hundred bills or whatever that have been tried to pass at the state level um, just in this past legislative session. So they track all the bills, where they're at, what is the contact info for the people who are sponsoring those bills. So it's just a fantastic clearinghouse for going to get information and um, finding out who you should contact or who you should amplify um, to try to stop that legislation. So highly, highly recommend that website. Um, they also have a Twitter account as well. So you can um, follow the Transformations Project on Twitter and get updates that way as well. So I think that wraps up my version of this tag. Um, and uh, I look forward to watching more of these as this tag goes around BookTube. Um, and I should have said at the beginning that I'm late to this because the Trans Day of Visibility was March 31st, but it is always a good day to step up for trans rights and stand up with trans kids. Um, so with that, I will sign off and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks, bye.